Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Pauline Fu. In this video, I will discuss regression with time series data. When regression applied to time series data, the residues are often autocorrelated. When the residues are autocorrelated, the conditions for regression are violated. So the topic for today, we will talk about autocorrelation, Duban Watson test, and how to solve autocorrelation problems and uh, solve heterostasticity. Finally, we are forecast um, seasonal data using regression. Uh, remember, if we have a time series data and uh, the x, usually it is the time, okay, and y is the dependent variable. The first order regression model is this one. Okay. X is the time, beta zero is the intercept beta one slope, and the epsilon t is the error at time t. Because we are saying the residues are often autocorrelated, so the error at time t often relates to the error at time t minus one. And this row, is a parameter that measures the correlation between epsilon t and epsilon t minus one. Okay. This vt is normally distributed with mean is zero and the variance is a sigma square. Okay. Um, so this is a general model. Now, look, let's look at an example. This example will illustrate strong autocorrelation can cause a problem in regression. So this graph shows a time series plot for yt and xt. Those two time series are unrelated we just put the graph on the same graph, put the data on the same graph. There are different data, yt and xt. This xt does not represent the time, okay? So, so this graph is xt. And the graph above it, that is yt. So two graph, two data in one graph. Those are unrelated, xt and yt, okay? They looks like moving at the same direction. So when x increase here, y increase. When x decrease, y decrease, etc. But x t, y t are unrelated. And from the auto correlation coefficient table, we can. This is for y auto correlation function for y. And we can see the independent errors, the assumption of independent errors is violated because this is time like one, like two, like three, like four, five, six, seven. All this value here, you see this part, they are greater than the boundary. This is the boundary. Anything inside this boundary, that is good. Okay, beyond that boundary, that means independent errors uh, is violated. Okay, this is an auto correlation for yt. And if you get auto correlation for xt, you'll get a similar picture. You'll get similar picture. Okay. And then when you try to you try to do the regression between yt and xt, you get this fitted line, you get this model, okay? 
And this is the scan plot showing X relationship between XT and YT. But I told you at the beginning, XT and YT are unrelated. They are independent. But when you want to try to put them together, you produced a regression equation, and it looks like the R square is not that bad. And you want to set up a relationship between X and Y. They are unrelated. How can you set up relationship between X and Y? Okay. Uh, that this example illustrates strong auto correlation can make two unrelated variables appear to be related. Okay. So be careful with the uh, auto correlation. So how do we know if auto correlation exists? We can use Dubang Watson test. Okay, the hypothesis is that H0, rho equal to zero, means there is no correlation. And the next one, alternative hypothesis, rho greater zero, means there is a positive correlation. Okay. And the test statistic we used is this formula, okay. DW, Duban Watson test. Okay. And the ET is the residue for time period T. ET minus one is the residue for time period T minus one. As you notice this formula, uh, both denominator and the numerator has the square. So Duban uh, test statistic must be greater equal to zero. Okay, so this formula, if the result is zero, that means there is a perfect positive auto correlation exists. If this formula result is number two, there are no auto correlation. And if this is number four, it is a perfect negative correlation. Okay. And um, sometimes you need to refer a table to determine uh, if there is a correlation or not. Okay. So if Duban test greater equal, greater du, du is the lower limit uh, in a table. I'm going to show table in one second. Okay. If dw greater du, the result is no correlation. If dw smaller dl, the conclusion is there is a positive correlation. If dw between dl and du, the test is inc inconclusive. We have to use other method um, to draw a specific conclusion. Okay. So this example, um, example, 8.2. Okay. Um, this example shows you how to calculate DW. Okay. So it is a, I'm going to show you page 346. Yeah, it is based on this table here. You have the sales data YT. You have income XT. By the way, this is a brand new example, different from the first example I gave you at the beginning, okay? Completely different example. Y represent sales, X represent income, okay? And you put X, Y into Excel or SPSS, um, you can produce the regression model. Based on that model, you can calculate residue. Once you calculate residue, ET, you can do um, ET minus ET minus one. So basically, how do you get 28.83? You use negative 47.53 minus negative 
76.33, you get 28.83. And you continue to do this, okay, until you get complete the square for ET minus ET minus one, and also cal calculate ET square. Toward the end, you add the last two columns together, okay? And the Duba Watson test, it is just use this number, okay, divided by this number here. So this is a, this example. How do you calculate a DW? Okay. Uh, remember when we draw conclusion about Duban Watson test, we need to compare DW with DLDU. How do I get that number? That number is on table B-6. Okay, Duban test Watson test bounds. Uh, this table assumes significant level 0 0.05. Okay. Uh, K represents uh, number of independent variables. N represents sample size. Okay. So for example, if you have a sample size 25, you locate this N. And then if you have one independent variable, what is DL? DL 1.29, DU 1.45. Once you get DL, DU, and remember, you also calc you can calculate DW from example 8.2. You can use this table to draw conclusion about auto correlation. Okay. So this is this one here. We already did this one. Um, oh yeah, the, the table is here. Okay, this table in example 8.2. This is original sales, Y, income is X, okay? And you calculate uh, the residues. And the dual-bound test is just this number divided by this number, that is your DW. And when you try to fit the model, you use income as X, sales as Y, and you get this model. You get this model. And it also shows the R square and uh, adjusted R square. You can use Excel to just punch in this number in Excel, Y, X, and then you go to data, data analysis. You can produce uh, an equation, okay? Uh, even without data analysis, you plug in this scanner plot, right click your mouse on the scanner plot, and select the trend. You can add equation here. So now we know what is auto correlation and why it is a problem. Next, how do we solve this problem? Um, to solve this problem, we will start with looking at an example. So this example, the data is 8.3. Let me see, where is this data? So basically, this example said they want to develop a forecast model, okay, um, for the sales. So Y is the sales for the sales, and they want to use disposable income as X, disposable income as X, and the data is from 1990 to 2006. Okay. Um, they also have data about unemployment rate. So for the given data, we can calculate DW, that is 0 0.72. Okay. If we want to use significant level 0 0.01, and we can go to the table, uh, get the DL and the DU. Okay. Uh, since this DW 0 0.72 is smaller than 0 0.87, 
So there is a positive correlation exist. Okay, positive relation exists. Although you can use Y as the sales and you use the income as X, if you just uh, punching those numbers in Excel and you would produce a very high uh, R square. But that means that is misleading because you have positive correlations among the uh, errors okay so you cannot use the model so now let's uh, add another variable the variable is unemployment rate so this time we have uh, one y and two x one x is uh, income and the other x is um, employment rate or unemployment rate. So one y two x. You use this data. You go to Excel multiple regression analysis under data analysis tools. You can generate a model, and you can find the R square ninety nine point nine percent. Okay. Um, and also you can. Uh, use SPSS to get DW statistic, that is 1.98. Okay. Uh, because this time we use two independent variables, income and unemployment rate. When you look up into the table, K equal to two, sample size 17, you get DL, you get DU. Okay. Compare this DW with DL, DU. So DW greater than DU. When DW greater than DU, it is inconclusive. We don't have result. We have to use other method to get a result. Okay, so uh, this is the data. Okay, and this is the uh, computer output. Okay, uh, when you have two variables, one is a uh, income, the other is varied, and y is the sales, okay. and this is the model. Okay. Um, so the function, when you write down the function, it is here. Based on this coefficient, you can write down an equation. And you can forecast, make a forecast, just plug in what is the income and unemployment rate. Okay. Um, so this is uh, this one. Um, so in this example, we solve auto um, regression problem, auto correlation problem by adding an additional variable. That a variable is unemployment rate. Once you enter that variable, uh, it is uh, eliminate the problem with auto correlation. Okay, so next method to solve the auto correlation problem is to use transformation of the data. Okay, so this is an example 8.4. Again, this example is about sales, the relationship between sales and income. Okay, and this time we want to use uh, this model. Okay use this model to simulate the relationship between sales and income. So once you assume this model, we take natural logarithm on both sides of the equation and we get this uh, equation, okay? And we use Y represent the sales, income we use X and we get this general log linear regression model. And beta zero is the intersect. Beta one is the slope. Epsilon t is the random error. Okay. Um, so we transform the original data y and t into log y, log t. We take log. After you take log, you treat this as new y, treat all this as new y, new 
x, you can fetch the model. The result is here. You can see log. Log. This is the model for log. Okay. Um, so from this model, you can see Um, so this model is about logarithm to logarithm. It is about this data, log to log, okay? And you can also do the difference, okay? So this is show you the, the difference here. Okay. If you have this model, because it's a general model, it is also applied for t minus one. Okay, and then this model, both sides, you multiply by rho. Rho, and you subtract this model, this one, from this one, and you get this model. So you have this prime. The prime means the difference, okay? That's why you have This one here, you have y prime and x prime. Okay, and then you can use the y prime, x prime to create a model. So this is between prime means change, change in log equal to this change in log uh, income. And this is a, once you get this equation, you can get this equation, you, this is the equation, okay? And you can forecast for 1997, okay? And this is the uh, process for the forecast, just plug in the given numbers. Sometimes some number is ungiven. For example, the disposable income for uh, 1997, you can based on export opinion to estimate it is this amount, and you then plug in. Okay. Um, so this is a, how do you, this we showed you this one. Uh, next example, 8.7. Um, this example is based on, where's the data? It's based on data is on page 346, 346. It's based on this data here. So the example we are going to do now is based on this data, okay? Uh, you have annual sales data, you have income, you can fit, uh, you can create a model, then calculate EI, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So this is the data is here. When you look at the scanner plot, and this, this is the residue is Y, residue is Y, and uh, X, X is time, means year is X, as you can see, some negative residues and followed by some positive residues. Um, that means the conditions for regression model is violated. And also you can see the big change here for the residue over here. Okay, so we have to transform the original data um, into the log result. We get this model. Okay, and when you plug in, try to use the straight line to fit this model. Um, you cannot catch 
the curvature here. See, it looks like a parabola here. Okay, you cannot catch this parabola. So that's why we try to use a quadratic function to simulate the relationship between sales and the income. Okay, and this quadratic function. Um, so we can say uh, log sales. Okay, so log y equal to beta zero plus beta one. Uh, times income, income I use x, okay? Because I want to use quadratic term, so I have another coefficient, beta two, multiplied by x squared, okay? And then plus an error term. So this is my model, okay? When I use this model, and then I create a residue, and this residue is a good residue because the residue looks random and the residue has constant variability. So they are constantly changed around here. So that means this quadratic model is a good model. So, so, so far we talked about uh, auto correlation for time series data. How to detect auto correlation using um, the DW test statistic? And we also talked about the data transformation, change original data to log, or we want to use the difference uh, data. The purpose of this to eliminate auto correlation between the errors so that the condition for regression is met and we can produce um, a reasonable model. So next topic is about uh, using regression to forecast seasonal data. Okay. If you have seasonal data, for example, season one, season two, season three, season four, we are going to use dummy variable. Okay, so S2 represents uh, equal to one when the data is on the second quarter. S2 equal to zero if data is not on the second quarter, etc. For a data with four seasons, we need three dummy, three variable. Okay, uh, because uh, we allow one variable change. When you have four variables, degree of freedom is three. That's why we also have this three. But how do you uh, represent season one? <laughs> season one is this guy here. Beta zero represents season one, okay? So once you have this data, you can uh, put into the Excel and use multiple regressions to generate an equation to estimate those coefficient. Uh, this is an example. See, you have different seasons, you have this data. Okay. And this is the output for them. You can do it Excel, SPSS. Okay. Um, this slide is about um, economic theory, when we want to create a model. For econometric forecasting, economic forecasting, okay. Um, so we have uh, two concepts here. One concept is endogenous variable. That is my y, and the other is uh, extrogenous variable. That is my x, okay? Um, so this is uh, the model for that question. You can read by yourself. Okay. So in summary, what we did in this lecture, we talked about regression in time series data. When you apply regression in time series data, autocorrelation uh, will occur, and we can use DW test statistic to 
uh, detect auto collision, and then we can use uh, add appropriate variable to eliminate auto collision. We can also eliminate or decrease the chance of auto correlation by using data transformation, change to logarithm, or use the difference data. And finally, we talk about the um, econometric forecasting. All right, so before we end this video, let's do some problem. Question one. What is the serial correlation and why it can be a problem when time series data are analyzed? Okay. So serial correlation means uh, the error for time t correlates to the error for time t minus one. Why is a problem? Because it is violate the condition for regression. Um, question two, what is the major cause of serial correlation? Um, it is actually uh, arise naturally when you use time series data. You quite often you have this correlation. Um, question three: Which underlying regression assumption is violated when time series variables uh, are analyzed? Um, Times. Um, <coughs> oops, my little dog. <laughs> okay, quiet. Um, it is independent of errors that is violated. Uh, number four, NAM statistic, test statistic commonly used to detect correlation. So, DW test statistic. And question five. You test for serial correlation at a 0 0.01 level of significance with 32 re residues from a regression with two independent variables. So this indicates n equal to 32, k equal to 2. And if you calculate it, two pound dw is 1, what is your conclusion? Okay, what is your conclusion? So for this one, um, you have to go to the table. So go to the table. Here. So when you have k equal to two, um, what is the k equal to two, n equal to 32 here. 32 is here, n equal to 32, k equal to two. And you have, this is a DL 1.31, DU 1.56. So your DW, the DW given, DW you are given it is one. So one uh, smaller than this DL. So you conclude uh, there is no uh, correlation. No, this is a, um, no, the, when DW smaller than DL, you conclude uh, the errors are positively related. Okay, so that is a question five. And uh, question six, similar questions. Okay, uh, now let's, uh, Read question seven, suggest ways to solve the problem of serial correlation. Okay, so question seven, uh, maybe to add important predictor. For example, we did an example, we add unemployment rate. Okay, uh, the other could be do the data transformation, uh, do the logarithm or do the differences. Okay. Uh, question eight, what are the predictor variables in auto regressive model? The predict variable is y like one. So y minus one is a predictor. So question eight, this is y t. Okay. 
Okay, and predictor is y t minus one. Okay, all right, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.